Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news of this morning, mother seeks a public's help in locating missing 16-year-old daughter. A distraught mother is pleading with the nation to help locate her 16-year-old daughter, who she says has been missing since May 2, 2024. Michelle Sullivan, mother of Marliana Wittick, also known as Ashanti or Ashanti, says her daughter was last seen at home on May 2, sporting a yellow joggers, white top, and gold and black neck slippers. She said she had spoken to her daughter minutes after 7 p.m. on the night she went missing to let her know she would be home soon. She said she arrived home at approximately 7.20 p.m., but her daughter was nowhere in sight. Sullivan said after calls to her daughter's phone began going to voicemail, she filed a missing persons report with the stadium police. She has expressed, however, that she believes very little is being done to find her child and is now seeking the assistance of the public. I'm appealing to the public, if this is my child, please help me to find her. Please return our home safe. It's affecting all of us, she said, highlighting that her daughter's disappearance has been taking a toll on the family. Sullivan described her daughter as a very shy person, indicating that she would often beg the 16-year-old to go out and socialize. Shanti does not go out. She doesn't have a lot of friends. Sometimes I have to beg her to go outside with her sisters. She's always inside our bed. As long as she have our phone, our food, and our internet, she's good. She's not leaving our home to go nowhere, Sullivan said. Visibly overcome with emotions, the mother said she is trying to keep herself from assuming the worst, but it says, after questioning people in the community, no one seems to know anything about her daughter's whereabouts. She went on to state that what is even more mysterious is the calls that she has been receiving from individuals on a private number, stating that her daughter was caught with an alleged criminal and that she has been put on $150,000 bail. One particular call, a female call telling me that my daughter is on $150,000 bail. She called to say she has my child at the Content Spring Police Station because she was found in the presence of a wanted man with his stolen cars and stove and that she's on $150,000 bail. She asked me to pay the money at the court's office, she explained. The mother said that she reported the new developments to the Content Spring Police who informed her that they did not have any underage girls in their custody, more so on bail bond. Sullivan said that she did not pay the money as she was instructed. She also revealed that she has not received any other correspondence in regards to her missing child since. The mother said that she is urging the public to assist her on the quest to find her daughter. I am begging Jamaica, help find Shanti, she pleaded. Couple charged with indecent exposure following Spalding Oral Sex Act and a brawl. An exotic dancer is among two people charged with indecent exposure and a disorderly conduct following a sex act on a street in Spalding, Clarendon on Monday. Head of the Manchester Police Deputy Superintendent Kerry Duncan told the Thursday sitting of the Manchester Municipal Corporation that the exotic dancer and a man were taken into custody after footage of the sexual encounter surfaced on social media. Videos of the sex act, which has gone viral on social media, show the couple performing oral sex on each other on Monday evening in a bar and on the street. Sources say the couple were paid to perform the sex act. There is a trend on social media where we see a video in Spalding where some persons were engaged in some public display of sexual encounters. Just to report to this meeting that these persons were in fact arrested and charged and are waiting to be placed before the court, said Duncan. Footage also showed a dreadlocked man being involved in a brawl with a couple. A reliable source told the news that the exotic dancer was also charged for giving the police a fake name and a false address. The man was granted bail while the exotic dancer remains in custody and is to face the parish court next Wednesday, June 19. Police believe the exotic dancer is not from Manchester or Clarendon. Father and the son on murder charge are granted bail. A man who was charged alongside his father with the fatal shooting of a woman and the injuring of her female relative at their home in Flower Hill, St. James, 
has been granted bail. Flower Hill resident Lavon Jaja Cook is jointly charged with 57-year-old Wilford Kong Cook with a murder and wounding with intent. During Wednesday's hearing, the Crown objected to bail for the younger Cook on the basis that he posed a flight risk. The court clerk expressed the concern that following the commission of the crime, Lavon left the area and went to Westmoreland, despite being aware that his name was being called in relation to the murder and only turned himself in a month later. However, defense attorney Henry McCurdy argued that his client posed the no-flight risk. He called his lawyer and his lawyer took him in when he found out that the police were looking for him, said McCurdy. During the proceedings, presiding judge Keisha Grant Price, who noted that Lavon was identified by an alias and did not appear on an official identification parade as required in those circumstances, described the prosecution's case as weak. After hearing arguments from both the defense and the prosecution, the judge granted Lavon bail in the amount of $500,000 with up to two shorties under the condition that he reports to a specific police station on specific days and to stay away from Flower Hill. He was also instructed to surrender his travel documents and a stop order will be imposed at all ports. He is scheduled to return to court on July 24 where the case will be mentioned. In respect of the elder Cook, his bail was extended until that date. According to the allegations about 3.30 p.m. on March 17, 36-year-old security guard Natasha Smith and her relative were inside their house with other family members when both men, armed with firearms, entered the yard and opened the fire on them through a bedroom window before escaping in the area. The police were alerted and on their arrival, Smith was seen lying on her back in blood with a gunshot wound to her chest. She was taken to hospital where she was pronounced dead. The other woman was treated and released. Both Wilford and Lavon Cook were arrested and subsequently charged. Comp says he found 572 M16 spent shells at Keith Clark's house. Statements by a scene of crime detective, who is also a forensic photographer, that were read in court on Thursday, painted a picture of the scale of the gunfire at the home of 63-year-old accountant Keith Clark on the night he was shot dead by members of the security forces 14 years ago. The detective, who went to the house at 18 Kirkland Close in Red Hills, St. Andrew, hours after Clark was killed in the early morning of May 27, 2010, said he found 572 M16 spent shells, one M16 magazine with 30 live rounds, nine 9mm spent shells, five .38 cartridges, six canisters, and numerous brown stains resembling blood. I also swabbed the hand of the deceased Keith Clark for gunpowder residue, the detective said in one of his written statements. Clark was shot more than 20 times including in his back by members of the Jamaica Defense Force. Three soldiers, Lance Corporals Greg Tinklin and Odell Buckley, as well as a Private Arnold Henry, are on trial in the Home Circuit Court for murder in relation to Clark's death. The security forces said that when they swooped down on Clark's house, they were acting on intelligence that led them to believe that then-fugitive Christopher Dudus Koch and some of his henchmen were camping out there. It is alleged that gunmen challenged the security forces in a fierce battle before escaping in bushes at the back of the property. The accountant was shot dead inside his bedroom after the soldiers forced their way inside. The top floor of the house consisted of a sitting room, a study, three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The front entrance door opens into the sitting room. The top lock of the entrance door was cut by a rotating blade, the detective said in one of his statements. The inside door was cut with a rotating blade to gain access. Both the sides of the grill were still attached to the wall. There were panel chairs in the sitting room. The ceiling and interior walls of the sitting room had what appeared to be bullet holes. Concrete dust covered the furniture and the floor of the sitting room. Windows on the eastern wall of the study room had what appeared to be bullet holes. The bedroom of the daughter had no damage on the inside. The door to the master bedroom was broken and was leaning against the eastern passage wall, he said. In the master bedroom, to the eastern side, the body of Keith Clark was seen on the floor, lying face down in a pool of blood. 
The body was between the bed and a closer closet under the eastern wall and had what appeared to be several bullet wounds to the back, the detective stated. The head of the deceased was to the northeast and the feet to the southwest. To the left of the deceased head was an overturned reclining chair with a blood splatter. A television set was on the floor to the right side of the foot of the deceased. The bed under the top section of the closed closet were in disarray. A safe in the top section of the closet had its contents thrown about. A firearm holster was on the bed, the detective said. He also said he observed no stain resembling blood or any other marks at the top of the closet where the deceased was. I collected eight red stripe beer bottles at the scene. These bottles were examined for fingerprints. No fingerprints were found. I also swabbed the bottles for DNA. These swabs were packaged and labeled in accordance with where the bottles were found. I don't know if any of the JDF troops removed any spent casings when they were leaving the scene, said the detective. Guys, thanks for watching. Please join us this afternoon at 2 p.m. for another news update.